Welcome to Let's Talk Socials, the social media podcast that helps service providers to level up their Instagram game and become more confident at it. In this podcast, you learn about the latest updates and trends in the social media space and get a glimpse into my life as a social media manager and coach. Let's get started. Let's Talk Socials. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Socials. If you market yourself or your business on social media, then I am pretty sure that one of your goals is to sell more of your products or book out your services. If that is not one of your goals, then this episode might not be as relevant for you. But the majority of the business owners that I talk to in workshops, in coaching sessions, in networking events... Most of them will have this at least as one of their business goals. So I think for most people, this episode will be quite interesting. Today, I want to talk to you about a few common problems that I see that could be the reason why you don't really manage to convert the followers that you already have on your business account into paying customers. We are going to talk about the different problems and more importantly, how you can fix them, of course. A little disclaimer before we get into this episode. I'm going to talk about a few of the most common problems that I see people have with their business accounts, but it is still your responsibility to have a look at your insights and see if this really is your problem. What I can do is show you potential problems, but then it is still your task to figure out if that actually applies to your business as well. I often see Instagram gurus slash business coaches that give out tips and they say, this is why you aren't selling out your products. This is what you need to do. And lots of people follow this advice blindly because they think, well, they're a business coach or an Instagram guru. They have lots of followers, so obviously they must be right. But let me tell you this, not every piece of business advice is relevant to your business you still need to put that advice through a filter or like I like to think of it, put on your business glasses and see if this is really relevant for you. Just because someone else might be having this problem in their business, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have it too or that that is the reason why you aren't making consistent sales. And this is also why it's so important to work with someone who can have a look at your business with a magnifying glass and see what's not working. Don't just take general advice that you see on Instagram. Try to get personal advice as often as you can because that is always going to be better advice than just the generic one that you can find for free on the internet. That being said, let's dive into this episode. The first reason why you might have difficulties converting followers into customers is that your audience does not see you as an expert. In a crowded marketplace like Instagram, you need to stand out instead of blending in with everyone else. You're listening to my podcast because probably in the sea of social media managers on Instagram, I stood out to you and you liked the way that I explained things or you liked my personality. And this is why you are now listening to my podcast and not some other social media managers podcast. This is what I mean with standing out instead of blending in with the masses. I have just finished the book What Great Brands Do by Denise Lee John. And the book says that great brands, and this is also relevant for a personal brand. For example, if you are a service-based entrepreneur, like a graphic designer or a website designer or a social media manager, What these great brands do is that they don't follow trends. They create their own narratives. Instead of always running behind what everyone else is doing, great brands stand out in the crowd. Unfortunately, this trends topic is becoming very relevant when we have a look at reels. Every single week, there is a new trend to follow, if not every day. And I see the same reel over and over and over again. And you would think... Well, if it works for that other person, then it will also work for me, right? That seems like the logical consequence of making the exact same reel. But what it actually does is it makes you look like everyone else. It makes you blend in with everyone else. And people think it's again that same idea, that same concept, and they just scroll on. 
Because what will really help you to gain followers and to get a competitive edge on someone is to stand out in a crowded marketplace where everyone is doing the same damn thing. This week's trend is the one where the audio goes like, I would love to go with the flow, but when does the flow start? Or something similar. The first few times I saw reels with this audio, I thought, wow, this is really funny. I can relate to this so much. I'm an introvert and I always want to know what's gonna happen when we're going somewhere. The other week we were celebrating our sixth anniversary and my boyfriend organized a surprise for me. And while I love surprises, I also kind of want to know what the surprise is. <laughs> so I was nervous all day because I didn't know what he had planned. So when he came home from work, I asked him, can you please tell me what the surprise is and like where we're going to go so I know what I have to wear and like when it is going to end and all these kind of things. So yes, I could deeply relate to this audio. But the second time or the third time, the fifth time and the 20th time I saw it, I'm not exaggerating, I really see this so often. I was just thinking, I wish they had put a different spin on this or that they had injected their own ideas, um, basically made it theirs instead of literally just copying the exact same thing. And what that does, instead of giving me the impression that this person is a leader in their field and that they know what they're talking about, it leaves a negative imprint on my brain and it's telling me that they're not really that creative, they're not the leader that they are thinking they are or that they are pretending to be. And that's really just a pity. So instead, what you should be doing to position yourself as an expert are the following things. First of all, you always want to bring in your perspective on things. So even if you see a really cool audio, you save it and you think you could make a really cool reel later on with this, put your own spin on things. Instead of making the exact same reel as everyone else, think of how you can bring your own personality into it. So maybe instead of using the same idea of using the reel, put it the other way around. So add a funny element or a surprising element. A second thing that you can do to help position yourself as an expert is to provide social proof. This can help people understand that you have already managed to solve problems for others in a similar situation before and show that they were really happy with your service and your results. Social proof is really powerful because other people's opinions matter. I also want to encourage you to be controversial. I don't mean to post clickbaity kind of posts like this is how I gain 10,000 followers in seven days and this is how you can do it too. Not those kind of posts. Please, please don't do that. What I mean is that you, again, put your spin on things and dare to say your professional opinion about a topic that is relevant for your niche. This is so important because only an expert can be controversial, right? If I don't know what I'm talking about in a specific field, I cannot point out mistakes that others are making or even have my own opinion on this topic. I could tell you that losing followers is actually a great thing because you're sorting out the people who were not going to buy from you anyways. That is an opinion that I can voice because of my experience from having worked on accounts that have not been losing followers and that have really, really low engagement, that don't convert followers into clients, etc. The list goes on. And I have compared these to accounts that do regularly lose followers and sort out these not ideal clients. That's something that I can say because I have the experience in that field and that will position me as an expert in turn. A few weeks back I recorded this episode about the signs that you aren't ready to hire a social media manager. If you haven't listened to it yet, you can do this after this one. Again, this is something that a starting social media manager cannot really talk about because they don't have the experience. They haven't worked with a lot of clients and seen that some might not be ready to make that hire. In fact, two years ago, I wouldn't have been able to make that episode myself because I didn't have the experience. 
They will also not have seen the signs that all of these businesses have in common because, again, they don't have the relevant experience. This is something that I can voice now because I have worked on multiple accounts and therefore people will see me as an expert in this field. One last thing that you can do to position yourself as an expert in your field is to make content that only you can make. Now, this has two advantages. First of all, it shows that you know what you're talking about. You're not just copying what everyone else is saying. And secondly, it is much harder for other people to copy your content and pull it off as theirs so that people think that they are the expert. Unfortunately, this is still something that we have to talk about because this is still something that happens in the industry of social media marketing. I talked about this a few weeks back when there was this huge industry scandal where a large account was copying other people's content without asking for their permission and basically pulling it off as theirs. But if you make content that has your experience and your personality infused, it's really hard for others to pull that off because their followers will immediately see that it's either a different style or there's different opinions in there, different way of talking. And you know what I mean. Please also don't make content that your audience can just Google. An example. Often social media managers will post stuff like the 10 hashtags that you can use on your Instagram account or how to change your story highlights. If I want to know how to change my story highlights, I can simply Google that or go to the Instagram help center and I will immediately find the answer. This is not something that shows me that you are an expert in your respective field. This just shows me that you can Google, which is also a skill, let's be honest, but it doesn't really have the result that it could have, that you could achieve with content that shows that you know what you're talking about. The second reason why you might have difficulties with converting is that you aren't actually asking for the sale at all or in the right way. This goes beyond forgetting to add a call to action to your post. I think by now we all know that we should have call to actions in our posts, whether that is asking for engagement or directing your audience to a link in your bio. That is not what I'm talking about. With most business owners, I see one of these two situations. Number one, they either don't talk about their services at all, like never ever. It's just like, well, my audience will magically know what I sell. They will magically know how they can work with me, what results I provide how much this is going to cost them, what benefits my services provide, etc. That's not the case, but let's talk about that later. And secondly, scenario number two, they talk about their services, but always in the exact same way. It's always like, hey, I offer this service, it costs this and this amount, and you can book right here or via the link in bio. For example, they're always listing the advantages of booking a session with them or inquiring with them, or they always just show customer testimonials. Now, why is this wrong? The important point to understand here is that we all are different types of buyers. Each person has different reasons why in the end they make the decision to buy from you or to work with you. There are different types of buyers that we consider in marketing. I won't go into too much detail, but if you want, I can record a separate episode on all the different buyer types and what kind of content works for each one of them and how you can leverage that. But let's not talk about that in this episode. I'm going to give you a few examples though. So we have the relationship based buyer who really focuses on their relationship with the person. They will never buy from you before they have established a relationship with you. For them, it's really important that you send messages with them, that you engage with their content, obviously always in an authentic and real way. We don't just want to comment random things or send them meaningless messages, but they really want to start communicating with you 
or be a bit of a silent observer, but they have to build a relationship and the trust with you first. Then we have the analytical buyer. This buyer is really focused on logical arguments. So they know exactly what they want. They know what they need and they want to be convinced with logical arguments. For example, you get 10 sessions, they cost $100 each, and this is what you're going to get as a bonus if you buy this. So those are really logical arguments and features of your offer. So to start asking for the sale, the first thing you need to do is find out what kind of buyers your ideal client is. You can do this with guess what? Market research. <laughs> By now you should know that I'm really big on market research, find it so important and it's incredibly powerful to find out more about your ideal clients. A common way to do this is to ask your current clients why they have decided to book with you or buy from you, work with you, depending on what you do. You can also ask them what convinced them to work with you and maybe even what objections they had before that. The more people you interview, the clearer you will see what kind of buyers your ideal client is, and then you can start making more content that speaks to them and to what they need to hear. For example, what you could do after you finish a project with a client, you can ask them to fill out a questionnaire and you can ask them a few different questions. So why have you decided to work with me? Now, what was your the last straw, so to say, that convinced you to work with me? Um, what content do you really like on my page? These kind of questions. You can, for example, also offer them a small discount for the next time they will book with you as an exchange for filling out this questionnaire. Second point here was to talk about your offer in different ways. I want you to talk about your offers frequently, not just once a week or once a month. That is not enough. Ideally, every single day or every second day and try to talk about it in different ways, highlighting different aspects, speaking to different buyer types, and you will have a much easier time converting followers into clients, believe me. And then we have a last reason that could be causing this problem for you which is your audience does not see why they need your service. This is a very common problem in all different kinds of businesses and something that lots of people are struggling with. For you, it might be the most obvious thing why people need your service, but for most people, that might not be the case. As a social media manager, I know all the benefits of having a fantastic social media presence and it makes so much sense to me to hire a social media manager for a business to take care of that aspect, you know, so that business owners can focus their time on other things in their business so that they can stay in their zone of genius, etc. But to the average business owner, that might not be as clear. They might think, but then it takes me more time because they have to provide me with resources or it might cost them a lot or they won't be able to see a return on investment or whatever other objection they might have. So for me, it's really important that I can show them why they would even need a social media manager before we talk about the nitty gritty of <laughs> social media marketing and how it all works. It's really important that you highlight why they should consider working with you by using your content. I'm going to give you a few examples of how you can do this. First of all, you can highlight a gap. Show them why they should book you. How you can do this is by either painting a picture of what it would look like if they were to hire you, or even better, paint them a picture of what their life looks like right now and compare it to what it could look like if they end up working with you. You can also highlight the negative consequences of not working with you. So showing them what would happen if they just continued the way that they are doing things right now. Or you could also use case studies of previous clients and show how you help them achieve a specific result that you know your ideal client also wants to achieve. As I said in the beginning, not all of these problems might be relevant to your business. What you can do is do a little bit of an audit 
to see if any of these applies to your business and then make sure that you also take action to fix these problems. If you don't know how to audit your own marketing or if you're not quite sure if you're doing it correctly and you would love to have some feedback, then book in a session with me. And this is exactly what I help business owners with on a daily basis. We can look at your marketing together, identify problems and then give you strategies that are first of all personalized to your business and secondly will help you to fix what's not working and then hopefully you will convert more followers into clients. Thanks for listening. I will hear you next time when it's again time to talk socials.